What's up, precious family? How are you guys tonight? Yes, I wanted to jump on here and do a double whammy today. Amen. I just got home not too long ago. And man, what a day, what a day, what a day. Whew. Sometimes you just got to take a deep breath in. And sometimes you just got to let it out. Amen. And you guys know that I had did the live earlier today. And it was a beautiful live. God really manifested himself in such a mighty and powerful way. And it was just such a blessing to see everything that God is doing in this season. And this is why I say that it's very important to always pray when you leave the house. It is very important, amen, to call upon the name of the Lord at all times and always just ask the Lord's presence to be there and to be with you and your children at all times because you never know, amen, what can happen, amen, when you leave your home. And God bless you, Pastor, amen. And it is such, like I said, a blessing, you know, to just see God's hand and to see God's power Amen. Being manifested in what he did today. And today, like I said, it was just a miraculous miracle because when I was leaving, amen, the, as many of you guys saw the video, amen, that I posted when I was actually leaving the restaurant depot, the lady in front of me, I ended up witnessing this car that just ended up coming out of nowhere, and I don't even know how it happened because sometimes it's like you could be like sometimes you think you're going to be going home and you're going to go about your business and you never know, amen, what can happen in your life. And I always say that this is why like some people be like, oh, why are you so positive, you know? Or why are you always, you know, trying to give life a different outlook? And it's because you have to live your life every single day with gratitude. And it's a choice. We can choose to be angry. We can choose to be bitter because God is not working in our life the way we want him to. But we have to know, amen, that God is in control, amen, at all times. And God is there. Like sometimes we may feel as human beings, right, that God is not around and that God is not listening to us and that God is not, you know, manifesting his power around us. And that is a lie, amen. God is literally holding the whole world, amen, in his hands. There is nothing impossible, for the Lord. Amen. And literally, like I said, everything happened so fast. So, you know, I remember, you know, just being at the light, just waiting for the light to change so that I can, you know, get on the highway and that big, huge intersection, right? The car just boom, right? Just rams right into the lady in front of me. And it was so crazy because when he hit her, it was like my mind just froze because it's like you witnessing that like right in front of you. And it's like my, my heart froze and I just was like, oh my God, I'm like, Jesus, I'm like, no, no, no. I didn't know it was a woman in the car. I didn't know who it was, but either if it was a man or woman, anybody, amen, my first reaction was like lifting up my hands like this, you know, like Jesus, no, like no. And I feel like when we lift our hands, I feel like we have power, right? You ever seen those movies, right? Where people have demonic powers and they go like that and they're lifting their hands and they're going like that. I don't know why I feel like us as Christians, we have to exercise that lifting up our hands and just you know, calling upon the name, right, of Jesus, you know, more and more and more. And, you know, when I saw him impact her, right, and I saw the car just plop like that and go in the air, it was so crazy because at that moment, it was like everything was in slow motion. Like, I literally, it was like, wow, like that. And I remember the car flipping up in the air and 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 tumbling down like plop right and then it went back up in the air 
and it was like going back down like plop and then i remember the car flipping completely over like the roof was when it flipped over the 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 roof of the vehicle was smashed down plop like that to the thing and as i'm praying and i'm like jesus no and everything is happening like so fast right i remember the power of the lord literally taking that lady's car and literally pushing it and flipping it over one more time right why is this important for me to share this with you so you can see it in details because the devil is always around and it's like you sometimes could be at the wrong place at the wrong time. And sometimes you can end up being at the right place, even though it's the wrong time, right? But it's ordained by God the way he wants it to, because it could have been one minute and I could have been right there in the front. It could have been one minute and, or it could have been somebody else. It could have been one minute or it could have ended a totally different way. But whenever God is doing something, you best to believe that the devil always wants to try to take the glory. And it was so crazy to me because if you guys see in the video, right? Because this is why I say, I don't care who don't like me, who whatever, because there are demonic agents everywhere. Amen. They exist and they want to see, they want to see you dead. Amen. Men, they want to see you die. They want to see the they want to see the earth swallow you up because it happened to Jesus and he wasn't nobody bad, right? Jesus was Jesus. Jesus was minding his business. He was doing what the Father called him to do. So people don't like you when you walking in the anointing. Amen. People don't like you when you walking in the power of God and you're at, you know you're communicating with the kingdom of God. So whenever you're there and you doing what you got to do for the Lord, you best to believe darkness is around. Agents of darkness are also around. So as the car, you know, stopped, I remember telling the kids like it was like cars in front of me, cars behind me. It was like it don't matter like all around like you know because it was like such a huge intersection and I told the kids I was like yo stay put I need to go help and see what's going on make sure that you know the person is okay so as I'm running to the vehicle and we taking her out and everything and, and we put her on the grass because she wanted to stand up but I'm on the phone with 911 and I'm like, should she be standing up or should she be sitting down because she got too much adrenaline, right? Imagine your car flipping up like four times, pow, pow, pow. You know, your adrenaline is going to be like all over the place. And you know, people could die like that. People could get like, people could have like cardiac arrest like that. So you got to be, you know, careful when you dealing with people or helping somebody like that. So they was like, no, the, the 911 operator told me, she was like, no, sit her down. And we sit her down. And as I'm praying and giving God the glory, okay. How this satanic agent, okay, this bruja had mad santeria chains all over. I'm talking about she had like 50 chains on her neck, okay? This lady, this voodoo priest, this voodoo lady takes one of the chains to give it to her, trying to tell her that the higher power was with her. And this is what I mean about confusion. This is what I mean about the devil always trying to take the glory away from God. Because the devil is, is he will plot something and then try to take the glory for it, right? But everything that the devil does, right? God always, my seller, right? He works it out for our good. This is why I always say we can't question God. There are moments where people will hurt you. Don't question God. There are moments where people will doubt you. Do not question God. There are moments where you will be without money. Your finances will be down. Do not question God. There will be moments where death can come into your family. Okay? And, and hit you in a horrible way. We cannot question God. We don't know what God is doing. We don't know what God is up to. We don't, we, we just got to worry about fulfilling our purpose. What is our purpose? What did God put you here on the earth to do? 
what did he accomplish, right? What is it that he wants you to accomplish? That is what we need to be focusing on. We need to be focusing on our relationship, amen, with the Lord, our only Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we need to be focusing on. We can't be focusing on the enemy and what he is doing because at the end of the day, God has his power over what the enemy is doing. God is more powerful than the devil. So you got to learn, amen, to be without. You have to learn because that's part of our Christianity, Sometimes things are going to be good. Sometimes everything is going to be all that and you're going to be happy. But what about those moments when things ain't all that? What about those moments when your household, your household is falling apart? What about those moments where you are afflicted with sickness? What about those moments when everybody walked out on you? What are you going to do with your faith in that moment? What are you going to do with your faith when death, boom, 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 knocks on your door? Because the devil is always plotting one on you, on me, on all of the children of God. This is why it's important because I'm so thankful that that lady took those voodoo, that voodoo chain. And with all her adrenaline, she was like this. She was like out of breath, but she like threw the, the, the voodoo thing out. And I'm like, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, right? And she was trying to tell her like all the higher power is with her today and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just looking at this lady straight in her eyes. And I'm just like, thank you, Jesus, okay? Jesus, I looked at her and I was like, girl, you, the holy angels of God, okay, were, 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 were hovering over this place and over you, amen, and you have to sometimes check the devil in his face because sometimes God will put the devil right there next to you, ages of darkness, but then he will put his real children right there next to you to help you, and it was so beautiful, like the relationship that I was able to build today with that lady and pray with her. And even everybody that was watching was like, oh my God, like it was just such a beautiful moment to pray, to be there at that moment, praying in that intersection where everybody's like looking like, oh my God, are they praying right now? Like you dang right. We praying. Amen. We are thanking God. Amen. And we are giving God the glory because he is good. Amen. You dang right. We praying right there on the intersection in front of the firefighters, in front of the EMS, in front of everybody. We praying and we're going to take a moment and we're going to thank God. Amen. And we're going to thank Jesus and we're going to thank his holy angels. And we're going to thank because she got two babies. Amen. That she's able to come home to tonight. And what if things would have been different? What if those two babies would have not had their mother coming home tonight? What would have been of those kids? What would have been of her husband, you know, and, and of her situation? Like you just don't ever know, amen, what can happen, right? When you leave your, when you leave your home, yes, um, Liz was like, there's so much activity, yes, going on right now everywhere. He is, and if you look at the video, you can see I'm not lying. You see the lady with her nails. You see all the, the, she had voodoo, a whole bunch of, um, like demonic rings everywhere. She had voodoo bracelets everywhere. And she had, and I, I know those beads. Those were, those were voodoo Santeria beads. And she had like 40, 50 of them on her neck. Right? So is she looking at me like, like, and I'm looking at her like, like the Lord is here. <laughs> Jesus is here. Okay. The presence of God is here. Amen. And it's just so crazy to me, you know, and I want to share some scriptures with you guys today. Amen. Yes. Marcella was like, remember, we are not alone. Jamila. Yes. Only God could do that. That's why when that lady tried to come to her and talk about the higher power and protection and giving her them, them voodoo things, like it was like, uh, uh, because you can't come into covenant with the devil. Amen. You can't come into covenant with the plans of the devil. So when you look at Deuteronomy 130, what does it say? It says that the Lord, your God will go ahead of you. Amen. And fight for you as he did in Egypt, because you saw him do it. Whenever we are dealing with situations in our life where 
We want to see God's working hand and working power being manifested in our life. We have to be willing to draw closer unto the Lord, right? In those moments when we don't want to, in those moments when we too busy to pray, in those moments when we got too many things going on that we worried about is not important. We need to learn to put, pri we need to prioritize, amen? Prayer at night with the families. We need to prioritize midnight prayers. We need to prioritize three prayers at three o'clock in the morning. Why? Because the devil is out there working with his agents, right? The devil is out there plotting against the children of God. He's out there plotting and, and it's so important for us to be awake. It's so important for us to, to be praying unto the Lord and even preparing ourselves for the next day. Look at this. Even I've been waking up a lot at three o'clock in the morning. And I've been praying. And even yesterday, it was so crazy because me and my husband didn't hear the alarm at 3 in the morning. And I'm like, the alarm didn't wake us up to pray last night, right? And he was like, no. I was like, that's crazy. I said, we're going to have to put the alarm on, on your phone, so that we could make sure that we waking up at 3 a.m. to be praying and rebuking the devil and, and all that stuff, you know? And he was like, yeah, we need to like put the alarm on my phone. So, you know, it's important to pray continuously. The Bible says we need to be continuously praying day and night. So if you wake up in the morning, you got to incorporate God in your work schedule. You have to incorporate him, you know, because if you want God to protect you, and you want God to go before you, it says it. The Lord will go ahead of you and fight for you just like he did for those in Egypt. But those that were in Egypt, they were under bondage. They were under slavery and the Lord, he went to fight for them. And I feel like sometimes a lot of us could forget, like we forget because we under bondage. We forget because God is not coming through or we forget because we feeling oppressed, right? Or we be all up in our feelings. We got to remember, right? And God bless you, Marina, my love. Amen. We have to remember how good God is. And we have to remember that his power is there and he is working consistently at all times. And we got to bind the devil every day, bind them a thousand times. And you know, all day long, I'm like, I bind you devil. I bind your plots all day long. I'm like, Every witchcraft attack that is being sent my way every single day, I'm like, Lord, rebuke it. Lord, shut it down. Lord, don't allow the devil to, to plot on me and win one on me because there are too many people that I know want to see me fall. Amen. They want to see me die. Amen. They want to, they don't want to see my breakthrough. Amen. People are so quick. If I were to divorce my husband right now, if my family were to fall apart, if I was to walk out on the name of the Lord and walk out on the, on, on the gospel, God forbid, you know how many people would be my friends? You know how many people would come and look for me and be like, girl, what's going on? Like, what happened? Like, just because they evil and just because they want to be in your business and just because they want to see you doing, they don't want to see you doing good. They truly don't want to see you moving forward and prospering in the things of the Lord. That's why they in the, that's why they in the Lord. So that's why they in the gospel supposedly with you. But they don't support you because that's the type of Christianity that is being birthed today. It's hypocrisy. It's people who are masquerading like Christians, but they don't really, they're not really in Christianity for what Christ died for. He died for the world so that the world would be able to know him and know his power, his manifesting power so that they can see his glory, so that they can see you know, so that they can see God through us. Like we are the manifesting power of God, like right here in the flesh, like people are supposed to see God through us. Right? So when you, you, when you 
shading your brother and sister, when you don't support your brother and sister, when you two-faced with your brother and sister, when you watch your brother and sister and you can't even say hello, right? When you all up in their business every day, but you can't even say nothing, you a hater. And it's like, and it's, and I don't want to say it to make anybody feel bad, but it's the truth. And you got hate. If I got haters like that, you got haters like that. And God wants your discernment to wake up. That's why the prayer, amen, your prayer, you need to elevate your prayer because the devil is always turning up the furnace. The devil is always turning up the heat in the kitchen where he wants to oppress you. He wants to strip you down. He wants to destroy your mindset. He don't want you to have a good mindset. He don't want you to be holy. He don't want you to be righteous. He don't want you to go to church. He don't want you to discipline yourself spiritually. He don't want you to spiritually grow. He don't want you to ordain your finances. He doesn't want you to, to honor the Lord with your, with your first fruits. He doesn't want you to tithe. He doesn't want you to give. The devil is a liar. He doesn't want you to be prosperous. He doesn't want you to be happy. He doesn't want you to have access to good health care. He doesn't want your children to have, you know, all of their student debts paid off. The devil is the devil. He don't want raises coming into your household. He don't want you to progress, right? So if we know that the devil is so bad, why are we going to take it easy on him? Why are we going to be so consumed with the affairs of our daily life and not be more preoccupied with seeking God for his protection, seeking God for what he can do tomorrow, seeking God for what he already did yesterday, seeking God for what he did today. We need to be continuously the altar Amen. In our heart, it needs to be continuously on. Amen. And it doesn't matter how busy we are. It doesn't matter because you see, when you get fit, when you come face to face with death, right? And the devil has one on you and he's plotting to take your life, right? When the devil is plotting against you and death knocks at your door and you come face to face with God, you're not taking your job with you. Your position ain't coming with you, right? So where is your foundation? It's like, what are you building on? What is your, what is in your heart? What are you desiring from your heart? Is your heart attached to your marriage? Is your heart attached to your children? Is it attached to friendships? Is it attached to your church, to your pastors? Like, where is your heart? This is why the Bible teaches us that from the abundance, right, of our mouth is, is what speaks from what is inside of our heart. And we need to treasure, right, the things of the Lord. We need to learn to treasure the, the word of God and not look at the word of God like it's boring because it is this, when we look at the word of God and we start to fall in love with the word, we are going to see the power of God being manifested in our life. And when you see the power working for you, right? What does it say? It says in second Thess Thessalonians three, three, it says, but the Lord is faithful and will give you strength. Amen. And he will protect you from the evil one. Yo, the gates of hell had a plot that day. We don't know if it was for her, if it was for me, if it was for the lady behind me, if it was for the lady on to the right or the lady to the left, we don't know. But the devil was already plotting when the children of God were sleeping. Okay. So when we were out there, right, you know, cause everything is spiritual. You see, Witches and warlocks, they understand that everything is spiritual. That's why they don't play with their protocols because they know that the devil will punish them. And sometimes we take it lightly with God because he's so graceful with us. Because he takes it so easy on us. And we cannot say that we love God. But we're not willing to grow in him and say, God, you know what? Please mow me. God, please have mercy on me. Like I know I'm falling short, but God, please give me, let, let me, let me make it up to you. Let, let, I hope that tomorrow could be better. You know how many times I failed the Lord in my prayer life? How many times I prayed, prayed, you know, and did things that I shouldn't have been doing and God's grace and God's mercy was behind me. 
And every day I would, I would thank him for that grace. Every day I would thank him for that mercy because I knew that I wasn't deserving. Amen. Of it. I knew that I was falling short and I knew that I could do better, but I kept on putting my eyes on certain things. And when you get to a point in your life, when you realize like, man, nothing matters. Nothing matters. Like we could work hard for our ministries. We could work hard to build things at home. We could work hard to give our children a better life. We could work hard to, to please people. We could work hard to do things for other people when they need us to be there for them. We could work hard trying to convince people, but you know what? I've learned, I've learned that at the end of the day, none of that matters. It doesn't matter what people think of me. It doesn't matter if people support me or don't support me. The ones that are supposed to be in my life and in my corner are going to be in my life and in my corner. And you can't worry about that as well. Those that are assigned to you are assigned to you. Amen. And those that are uplifting you and those that are feeding you in this season, those that are, you know, um, prof you know, professing, prophesying the word over your life, those that are covering you and, and pushing you into your purpose. Those are the ones that God wants you to keep in your corner. Those are the ones that God wants you to keep around because the word of God says that he protects those in first Samuel two, nine, he says that he protects those who are loyal to him. It says, but evil people will be silenced in darkness. Amen. That means that the demonic realm and the way they operate and the way they move, that means that God will silence your enemies. That means that the, and your enemies will be frustrated. Somebody at that scene today was frustrated with my presence there, was frustrated with the presence of God there, was frustrated because their plans were derailed today. This is why I tell you that the, you know, the enemy will be frustrated, right? Because the mission, amen, was not completed. Amen. And we have to thank God for those moments for his protection. We got to thank God for his miracle working power because God is not deaf. God is not mute. Amen. God is working, but it's up to us if we want to continue. Amen. Doing what God called us to do. And he's going to leave it. He's going to leave the choice up to us. He's going to watch you. And he's going to be like, okay, you want to keep on going to work and ignoring me every morning? Go ahead. You know what? You want to go to work and go stuff your face with all the foods that you want to every week and spend your money and not even, you know, give your tithes. You know what? God will be like, it's okay. Go ahead. Go do that. You want to come home from work and be tired and then be complaining and be nagging and stuff like that. God will allow us to be in our sin because he's a good God, but it's important for us to be in the world. Word, amen. And, and, and let the word feed us so that while we're at work, we can be productive. We can be positive. We can, you know, how many people you don't see on the news that a shooting broke out at their bank or at their school, right? So the devil is he, is he, is he, or is he not always working? Do you, or do you not, right? turn on the news and see the devil working every single day. So we see him working. We know, amen, that the devil is there. And we know that he is operating in every city, in every country, in every place because he is the devil and that's what he does. But the God that we serve, I don't want you to forget tonight, that the God that we serve, he is omnipresent and he is there in every season, every day. He's there every hour. Amen. And he has his hand upon our life. Amen. But is as long as we are, amen, doing what we have to do. Amen. And it is seeking him and it is calling on him. And even in those moments when you don't do it, I know God is still going to be faithful, but you will experience God's hand and God's power in an even more powerful way. If you literally start to pray and seek him and you're not expecting nothing in return, you're not asking for the death of your enemies. When you start praying and saying, God, you know what? I want you to kill the spirit behind my enemies. You know, don't kill my enemies, but kill the spirit behind them. Like when you start praying like that and you start literally asking God to favor you and to pour his blessings upon your life and to pour the anointing, right? 
or you over over your finances, over your health, over your ministry, when you start to desire those things, amen, God will work in a mighty way because it says in 1 Peter 3.12, it says that the Lord sees the good people and he listens to their prayers. That means that when you are a good person and you desire every single day to do good things with your time, when you desire good things, when you don't desire your enemies to die, but you want God to forgive them as well, right? When you don't choose to even, um, Sam's, um, Sa Samson, no, what's it Samson? Um, oh my God, I can't think right now. When the, uh, yeah, it was Samson, right? Where the Lord asked him what he wanted. Solomon, right? The Lord asked him what he wanted and he didn't want the death of his enemies. That's why the Lord said to him, because you didn't want, amen, the death of your enemies and you didn't ask me for riches and glory, but you asked me for discernment because that's what you asked me for. I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna give you the riches in, in honor. I'm gonna give you the discernment. I'm gonna give you the, the honor and everything else because, amen, you chose today a good thing and that's what i that's the purpose of this life amen for us to be you know appreciative with the lord if you forgot to be appreciative let this life empower you tonight to be appreciative with the lord if you haven't been thanking him enough thank him again and don't get tired of doing it thank him every day every single day if you know come before his presence with thanksgiving if you fall in short, apologize every single day. Every single day, say, God, please forgive me. Continue seeking the kingdom of God. Continue pressing in. Continue pressing on. Don't let the devil overpower you. Don't let the devil oppress you and you just sit there and you not doing nothing about it. Rebuke the devil. Rebuke his oppression. Rebuke his power. Rebuke his plot. Rebuke his agenda in the mighty name of Jesus and shut the kingdom of darkness down with your prayers. Shut it down with your boldness. Shut it down with the word of God. Let the devil know every single day smack him with the word. Because I say this to you today, not just because of what I experienced today and what I saw. I say this to you today because the Lord is putting it in my heart at this very moment that there are people that are watching this video right now and he's convicting you because you know he's tugging at your heart because he wants more. And sometimes we be like, God, but I can't give you more. Like why you want more from me and not more from the next person? Why me? And it's because he chose you. Amen. He put a calling upon your life. He put a, a, a seal over your forehead. Amen. So you can't argue with me. Amen. Or be mad at me. Cause I'm telling, I'm confirming something that God has been confirming to you. He's like, he wants to use you. Amen. He wants to elevate you, but you got to believe and you got to position, position yourself in the battlefield. Because if you don't, the devil is, I'm reminding you that the devil is continuously plotting something for you tomorrow. And if he's not watching you tomorrow, he's going to try to get you Sunday. And if he don't get you Sunday, he's going to try to get your kids next week, Wednesday. If not, he's going to try to get your husband right next week, Friday, or, or your, you know, somebody in your family next week, on um, Monday, Tuesday, right? The devil does not stop. So because the devil doesn't stop trying to attack us, trying Trying to take our, you know, trying to tear our faith down, we need to be obedient. So when the Lord says, Amen, the Lord sees the good people and he listens to their prayers, it says, But the Lord is against those who do evil. So if you are trying hard to do good, he said, No one could really hurt you because he knows the intentions of your heart. And when the intentions of your heart are pure, and when you are doing things right, not just for, you know, yourself, but you're doing it for his glory. You're doing it because he, you want to be a good representation of the kingdom of God. When you start doing things, amen, to 
please the kingdom of God and please the Holy Spirit and be a blessing unto others, man. Let me tell you, the favor and the, the righteousness is going to fall behind you and, and, and all around you. You're going to see people dying left and right. You're going to see bad things happening left and right. But guess what? It is not going to fall upon your life because the Lord says so and his word says so. So it says... In Psalms 91, 7, it says at your side, 1000 people will die and even 10,000 at your right side beside you, but you will not be hurt. Why is that? Because Deuteronomy 33, 27 says that the everlasting God, right, is your place of safety. If the devil tried to make you feel like the place of God is not your refuge and it is not your safety, rebuke him in the mighty name of Jesus. The word says that the everlasting God is your place of safety. Don't get it twisted and his arms will hold you up forever. It says, and he will force, amen, your enemy out ahead of you saying, destroy the enemy. So I pray today. It is my prayer, amen, for you tonight. It is my prayer that you receive this word, amen. It is my prayer that you analyze everything that I said and that you literally start to implement, amen, gratitude, implement thanksgiving, you know, implement all of these things, rebuke the devil, don't get tired, amen, of doing it. Because some of you may be like, Pastora, but I'm already doing that every day. If you already doing that every day, amen, glory to God, hallelujah. But if you're not doing it every day, listen to the word, listen to the correction, receive it in the mighty name of Jesus and start drawing your life and, and start, you know, prioritizing your time so that you can start seeing God's power being manifested over your life. And so that tomorrow, if something happens the same way, God protected me and protected that young lady and protected my children and you know did all that stuff today is the same way i would like and want god to protect you amen protect your children protect your loved ones amen from the power of darkness amen because like i said the devil is real and he's plotting every day and we need to be armored up and we need to be ready and we can't be playing around because the devil the bible says it. he comes every day to steal from you and me. He comes every day to destroy you and me and our family. He comes to kill, steal, kill, and destroy. So we need to come with that fire, amen, to knock him out with the word, amen. Knock him out with our praise. Knock him out with our giving. Knock him out with our serving. Knock him out with our service. Like we need to knock the devil out, amen, every single day, amen, and remind him who our God is. Amen. So I love you. I got to get back downstairs. My family is waiting for me. I told them I wanted to come up here and jump on a quick live, but we got mad groceries that we need to put away and, um, a cute little rug that I bought. I'm sprucing up one of my living rooms. Amen. And you know, just decorating it really cute and stuff. So I have to do that. I got to prepare for tomorrow's fastings. Ladies, please. If you're going to be fasting with us tomorrow, please, I know it's late. I can't text y'all now. My computer's over there. Um, if you're going to be fasting with us, please fast, be obedient. I'm not going to be able to send out the text, amen, today to see who's fasting or the email. But like I said, just know that tomorrow, if you haven't joined the membership, Please do so now. Look at the post that I put earlier. Okay, we're going to be, um, the, the video that I did today about breaking the cycle of, breaking the cycle of chaos in our lives. I'm going to be touching on that topic tomorrow and I'm going to go more in depth on that topic tomorrow and talk a little bit more about things that pertain to that topic. So if you don't want to miss that word, join the membership. Amen. We got women now that are joining left and right like pancakes. Okay. Join the membership and be a part of what God is doing. Forget about the devil. Forget about the, the, the devil's plans. If you need to draw closer to God, if you having chaos in your life, if you don't got no structure, if you frustrated, you need to join this membership now. You need to be a part of it. You need to start armoring up. You need to start fighting back. Amen. And if you can't fight back, it's okay. I'm going to grab your hand and I'm going to teach you how to swing on the enemy with the word of God. I'm going to teach you how to fight because that is what we are called to do. And that's what we're going to do. Amen. So I love you guys. 
I will catch you guys. Um, I'm going to do my video tomorrow. And like I said, I will catch you guys maybe sometime next week. Amen. I'm really going to try to post only once a week on here. Um, and you know, just basically post every week on the membership. So I'm going to post one video and then one that's private, you know, on the membership. Okay. So, um, just because we have too many things that we're working on. And for those ladies that are bilingual, get ready because one of my new songs is going to be coming out really soon called the Campo de ba Batalla. Amen. So we got a new song that is coming is about to be dropping. Um, hopefully really soon on all of the digital platforms amen is going to be available amen and i'm just like i said so excited god is doing amazing things and man i'm just so grateful amen god bless you um star um star ayala amen i am just so grateful for everything that god is doing in my life and all of the ladies lives like i'm just really really grateful and thankful amen for what god is doing amen guys so if this video bless your life don't forget to like it don't forget to share this video and don't forget if you want to start receiving daily devotionals amen from me don't forget to send me inbox me now your name your email and your cell phone number so i can send you motivational text messages so i can put you on my daily devotional list amen and so that i could keep you uplifted each and every week okay guys so i will catch you in the next video bendiciones